Welcome to a new reading vlog. We have a lot of reading things to do, <laughs> I guess. But first of all, I just want to say I hope you're doing well and having a great day, a great week. Um, let me quickly go through the books that I recently finished. So we have two of those. The first one is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I read for the Bronte Long, of course, which I am co-hosting with my friends and it's been such a joy, it has been a wonderful time, but I will not go much into this book because we do have a whole live show for it by the time you're watching this video. And I will also be uploading a reading vlog all about Jane Eyre and my experience reading it. So if you want to hear my thoughts, I will link both of those videos in the description because I feel like I've already talked about this book a lot, but it has truly really been such a delightful experience and I'm very excited to hear all of your thoughts, of course. And then another book that I will not get too much into um, on this video because we will also be having a live show for it for the Tea Leaves book club is We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. This so far is amazing. Um, it follows Japanese-American teens during the attack on Pearl Harbor and I feel like that's such a unique perspective that we don't always see in media, in books, in series, um, whatever it is. Um, or, I mean, there might be a lot of stories like this one, but they don't get, I feel like, the attention that they deserve. If you have any recommendations, by the way, I would love to hear them because so far this book is incredible. I feel like it, it has a very bittersweet feeling because the author manages to combine such sweet scenes in this book like you know the first kiss or going to prom and falling in love and just being a kid being a teenager in your day-to-day -day life but at the same time there's a war happening um, and a lot of people are suffering there's a lot of violence and it is okay i had to switch my memory card sorry about that but like i was saying it is just scary to think that all of those 
things can be happening at the exact same moment um, on the same second the same minute two people are having very different experiences and i feel like the author does such an incredible job showing us that and she makes me care for all of these characters i do wish maybe we had less perspectives to read about i think because sometimes i get so invested in a chapter and then suddenly it ends when i just wanted to hear more from that character's point of view but it's not really a big thing overall i'm really really liking this book and like i said we will be having a live show for it so if you are interested i will link it for you but it just feels sad to be reading a book about this and see how history keeps repeating itself but anyway I guess we all need to, you know, not forget these stories and support those who need us always. So that's a very important message that this book also talks about and it does it in such a genuine, sweet, but also just very honest and raw way and I'm really, really enjoying it. So that's We Are Not Free. As for the book that I just started reading, um, it was Sleepwalking by Mac Wallitzer. This is our current Dark Academics book pick and I don't think it's going too well. <laughs> Emma and Lucy didn't like this book and I cannot say I'm enjoying it, unfortunately. I'm now on page 32 and this is about a group of girls. They are called the Death Girls, yes. And so far all I know is that we have three main protagonists apparently and each one of them loves one specific female poet. So we have Sylvia Plath, Anne Sexton and Lucy Asher who's a creation by this author. Um, and they pretty much dedicate their lives to reading their poems and discussing them and thinking about their lives and deaths because this Lucy Asher just died I believe. Um, I'm not sure exactly what will happen with this book. It seems to be a slow one um, and I don't know what will happen with the plot itself but so far I'm not that intrigued. This feels like a Tumblr post to me so far. <laughs> it reminds me of old Tumblr days where people used to post very sad quotes all the time and just I don't know. It's hard to explain, I guess, but I feel like it is trying to sound very profound sometimes and it fails at it. Um, I, I highlighted this quote that said, the deaf girls would close their eyes and think of the suicides of their poets, of the sadness that filled every inch of space. And I really wrote down, like, is this supposed to sound deep? Or I don't know, because to me it just sounds a little cringy. So, I'm not sure, this is not going too well so far, <laughs> unfortunately, um, but we'll see, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm only this far into it, so I might change my mind, of course, but I will try to finish this one as soon as possible, first because it is a book club pick, and I would like, for once, <laughs> to be reading a book on time and not finish it on the day of our live show, um, so that's why I'm reading it now, and since it is so short, I believe it will be easy enough to finish it soon, but also because I have so many reading plans that I'm excited about. Oh my gosh, if you haven't seen my <laughs> spring reading plans video, it is a mess, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> because I get so excited. I get so excited about everything and there are a lot of both big books but also fantasy series which are also big books <laughs> that I want to read like oh my gosh I'm so excited about so many of them so I just want to make sure I read my book club picks and for that I also have a couple more that I can show you later but I would like to also start reading Les Mis by Victor Hugo. I am currently co-hosting a buddy read for it, um, a very low-key, relaxing one. It is over on my Discord, so if you'd like to join, I can also leave the link for you. But yes, I'm hoping to start Les Mis. Finally, it has been on my reading plans for ages, so I'm gonna try and do that. I'm not sure if it will be on this vlog, but soon-ish. I would like it to be in March. Um, and then maybe continue on with some fantasy series because I am in a big fantasy kick right now and I just need all the fantasy books that I can get
This sound of the rain is one of my favorite things in the world. I love it and we needed this rain. It hasn't rained a lot here in Portugal and now suddenly we are having a very rainy spring apparently and I love it. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. All right. Hi friends. <laughs> it has been such a long time since the last time I spoke to you on this vlog so I thought we would do a big catch-up I just recently did one which was not that recently I don't think was it a month ago maybe I've just been terrible at keeping up with booktube and just filming in general it has just been one of those months you know when just everything starts to pile up so fast and you just cannot keep up with everything. That's what happened and I wasn't really expecting it. I was not really expecting to take a break from YouTube and it doesn't even feel like I have because it was not intentional at all. But I guess it just needed to happen in order for me to <laughs> take control of everything again. It was just a very overwhelming month, not in a bad way necessarily despite my mental health not being in the best state currently. I am feeling a little better in general, but this entire year has not been the best. With everything going around in the world as well, I feel like it has affected all of us and it has been hard sometimes to, you know, just move on with your life and live a normal routine. It just feels weird and a little meaningless sometimes, so I have also been thinking about that. Um, but other than that, just a lot of things happening <laughs> in my personal life, but mostly at work as well. Everything suddenly started to pile up very quickly and it has been a little hard to keep up with everything. Sometimes that happens, you know, it's just life being a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, and it's okay, of course, but I'm hoping to, <laughs> at least in April, and now with the arrival of spring, I feel like... It is a good time, I feel like, to start reevaluating everything and plan things ahead so that this doesn't happen again so soon. Um, so hopefully I will be on track again. I'm really hoping to start sharing more content with you all because I have been filming a little bit, just not showing you yet because those videos are not ready. But I have been doing some work on a few videos that I have been meaning to get ready for you all um, for a while. So hopefully those will be coming up soon. Um, I do apologize for being a little absent lately, but I'm sure you all understand. I just don't like not uploading for so long, but sometimes it just happens, you know, and life gets in a way and that's okay. But we are moving on <laughs> and I am excited to share with you some books that I have been reading. Um, I can also quickly mention the last books that I finished. In general, I'm truly so excited about all the books that I am currently reading and all the plans that I have. I might have an exciting announcement for you all. I'm not sure exactly when that will be up, but I'm very excited to share it with you because it is a new project that I'm doing with a very dear friend and I'm excited for you all to see. And then, of course, we have Bronte Long going on, which has been so wonderful and it always makes my day to see you all joining us. So overall, there are a lot of exciting things happening. I just haven't been able to really upload a lot of videos, unfortunately, but hopefully that will change. We'll see if this time's the charm. <laughs> but anyhow, grab yourself a cup of tea because I feel like this is going to be a long update. I have some books to talk about, so just get comfy and let's talk about all of them. I feel like we should probably start with the books that I finished most recently and I did mention both of these on this vlog I believe it has been so long <laughs> but I think I talked about both of these a little bit I'm not going to talk too much about them because we already have a live show for one of them with the Tea Leaves book club which was for We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi I really, really enjoyed this book I ended up giving it four stars I think we all did um, give it four stars I'm not sure but we all enjoyed it a lot I really want to read more books by this author for sure and um, I'm not sure if this was her first book I'm not sure now 
I'll have to do some research on that, but I'm really hoping that she writes a lot more books because it, it was just incredible the way that she wrote these characters. They felt so real to me and their dynamic was adorable and it just broke my heart that they had to live through such an awful time in history. She did an amazing job exploring the background of each one of them, although I do think I would have preferred if we had less point of views to read from because sometimes I, I just got so invested in a chapter and then suddenly it ended and I wanted more from it but that's really one of my only criticisms about this book because other than that I really enjoyed it and I'm really glad because I guess you could call this a bit of a pet peeve of mine which is usually why I don't love reading books about teenagers or from the perspective of teenagers and that's because a lot of authors write teenagers as if they have no personality whatsoever other than making bad decisions or being dumb for no reason and I really don't like that <laughs> because sure they are young people they're going to make mistakes we all do by the way but that doesn't mean that they're not smart or caring or creative you know they have other traits other than just making mistakes which is something that everyone does and sure they are living at a time where you know they're just experiencing so many different things for the first time so of course they're gonna have a lot of questions a lot of doubts they're gonna go through an identity crisis probably which is perfectly normal and usually i don't like the way authors talk about that as if it is something completely abnormal or just stupid for teenagers to have. I really don't like that. And this author completely, you know, subverted that trope for me and she was able to create such endearing characters that you could see how much they would care for each other and all the different families we have here have such a beautiful relationship. Each one of the characters I feel like has a very special trait that distinguished them from the rest of the group, but they all combined make for such a great cast. It was definitely my favorite part of the book. I could not even pick a favorite character exactly because I just cared for all of them so much and it was also beautiful to see how she created this balance of, you know, living your normal day-to-day -day life while also witnessing this terrible event happening at the same time. So it was a really good book. Of course, it has some trigger warnings. I cannot exactly remember all of them right now, but I do, you know, advise you to maybe do some research before going into this, because obviously when you're talking about war, it will have some violence and abuse and some very difficult discussions, which are definitely very important, but just make sure that you are in a good place to read a book like this, I guess. So yes, this was definitely a success and I will leave the link for the Tea Leaves live show in the description of this video in case you'd like to watch it. I really loved it because it finally happened. <laughs> we found the book that we all enjoyed and that's perfect because it has been a while since we picked a book that all of us liked for the book club. So that was a very, you know, a nice breath of fresh air, I guess. So thank you to this book. Thank you to this author. I really liked it and I'm looking forward to reading some more of her books. Now on the other hand I'm gonna get a little negative but just for a little while I promise because I have so many other amazing books to talk about but for now I have to quickly mention Sleepwalking by Meg Wallitzer. This is or was well, it is still our current pick for the Dark Academics and it did not go well for me everyone. Um, I'm really sad to say that I don't know, there's something about the dark academia genre that always... <laughs> it doesn't work for me in book form. And I think that's because I have a very different idea of what dark academia is. Um, for some reason, I don't know what it is with all these books just being super pretentious and trying to sound much more profound than they actually are. I do think that this book had some good themes that it could have explored even between the parents and children's relationships. I think that would have been a very good and interesting at least plotline to dive into, but I feel like we never truly get there. It is just... I'm not even sure. It felt so superficial to me and just pretentious for no reason, as if this is a very exclusive club or 
I don't even know, just this place that only a few people can get access to just because they fell in love with some poets' works and the way they talk about the poets as well why do we keep romanticizing death and suicide? I don't get it, I think it is quite dangerous and I don't think this book did anything special. Quite the contrary, actually. I think it could be a little harmful even. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it never works for me. I ended up giving it two stars. I don't remember much of it, to be honest with you. So I don't have a lot to say. It was one of those books that was very forgettable to me. I finished reading it and I thought, oh, what was that? <laughs> Nothing about it stood out to me other than the fact that it tried to be something that it probably is not. Um, I, c I could, it's like I could feel the author trying to share a very important message, but she struggled with it a lot. And it's not the first time that I read a book that's so called Dark Academia. And it's nothing like I picture Dark Academia, which makes me sad as well. And I just, I don't know. It was forgettable and meaningless. I feel like that those are the best words for me to describe this book. I know a lot of people like it, although in our Discord for the Dark Academics, I've seen a lot of people not enjoying it as much, so I know I'm not alone. I don't think Emma and Lucy liked it either. And of course, we will be having a discussion about it soon enough, so stay tuned for that. But I just, it is one of those books where I really have nothing much to say because it didn't give me anything to talk about. It, it is just there. <laughs> So that's sleepwalking. If you read it with us for the book club or if you've read the book before, let me know your thoughts um, because this is exactly the type of book that I wish I had loved, um, but unfortunately it never seems to work for me. So also, if you have any Dark Academia book recommendations that have the same vibes as these movies, <laughs> please let me know, because that's the idea I have of Dark Academia and it, it just it doesn't seem to be the same that all of these books and authors have. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but if you have any book recommendations that you think are good, um, and just to give you a reference, some of the Dark Academia books that I've read and really did not like include this one, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, If We Were Villains was okay, it was, I think it was the best one so far, but even so I only gave it three stars, so if you have maybe book recommendations that have um, maybe a similar atmosphere that If We Were Villains has, that would be nice. I, I kind of like that one actually, but I think it's the only one that I liked. I would also consider actually um, Morris by E.M. Forster, kind of Dark Academia-ish, and I loved that one. So yes, if you have any book recommendations that you think would work better than all of those, please let me know because I would love, I would love to read a Dark Academia book that I completely fall in love with. So just let me know. But those are truly the only books that I finished recently. And moving on to my current reads. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm so excited to talk about this. So let's just start with our next Bronte Long pick. I feel like it is the best way for me to start this. So we have, of course, Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. And I'm so happy to be rereading this one because I love Anne Bronte. I will defend her <laughs> with all my passion and all my capacity because I adore this woman. And I know a lot of people are hating this book, actually either hating it or just, you know, not enjoying it a lot, which I get. And I think that going from Jane Eyre to this one especially can be quite shocking, maybe, because they are very different books. I feel like Emily Bronte and Charlotte Bronte wrote a very specific type of book. They have this big, intense, gothic atmosphere. They are usually quite dramatic. There's usually a big romantic subplot and you could argue that they have a few similar conflicts in their books but with Anne it is completely different. You will not find those elements, you will not find that dramatic plot and her books tend to be much more grounded and blunt and based on true reality. They're not ambiguous at all, I don't think. Um, and so it's a very different tone and I can see why people wouldn't like this book. It is basically about Agnes Grey who lives happily with her family but unfortunately 
they start having some financial issues and Agnes decides to try and help her family by becoming a governess. And this is supposedly based on Anne's true experience and I think you can absolutely feel that. This book feels very personal and it is quite slow moving so I completely understand why people wouldn't like it because there's not really much of a plot and it's truly a reflection about Agnes or Anne's experience and that's quite a different book especially coming from Jane Eyre and I guess that especially if you've never read an Anne Bronte before it can be quite you know quite a shock in a way because maybe if you've ever read anything else by the Brontes, you are expecting a completely different type of story. And that's not what this is. Oops, <laughs> what happened here? The bookmark is trying to fly. Calm down. <laughs> okay, um, so that's not what this is. This is a very slow moving story about someone who is talking to us about her experience as a governess and I've always loved it for Anne's voice. I really appreciate this book more so for Anne Bronte's writing style and what she's trying to tell us rather than the story itself. So I'm still very much enjoying it. I'm not sure if I will be enjoying it more than the first time I read this or not. Um, we'll see. I believe the first time I gave it four stars? Was it four stars? I think so. Um, it has some great quotes in here, I think it has some great ideas and Anne must have been a very brave person, I feel like, to write books like, especially The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, I feel like it must have taken her a lot of strength and courage to write something like that and this is just a tiny bit of what she can do as a writer, I feel like. So even if you're not enjoying Agnes Grey, in case you are reading it with us or you plan to, even if you don't like it, please don't give up on Anne because we still have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall to go. And that book, <laughs> I, I think it is amazing. And it is so far my, my favorite from the Bronte sisters, is it though? Because I haven't reread Wuthering Heights in a while. So... I'm not going to make that statement yet, but I just, I just adore that book and I adore Anne Bronte. So we'll see what happens. I will, of course, also be filming an exclusive reading vlog for this book. So you get to hear some more of my thoughts about it. And of course, we will also have our live show, which you can already set a reminder for. It will be on Milena's channel on Saturday, April 2nd, I think, um, but I will leave all that information in the description and you can already set a reminder for it in case you'd like to join us. It will be wonderful. So that's Agnes Grey. And speaking of both rereads and also maybe slow moving books that can be a struggle to get through, especially during the first time you're reading it, I decided to finally start rereading Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Oh my gosh. <laughs> First of all, can we appreciate this? It is so stunning. I absolutely love these covers. I love what they did with Robin Hobbs book covers. They are all so pretty and the way they look together is beautiful. Anyhow, that doesn't matter. This is the first book of the Far Seer trilogy. It is also a reread for me and I have been meaning to reread this book for ages because I do want to continue with the series so much finally because a lot of people keep raving about it and I am in a big fantasy mood right now. You have no idea. I just want to start all the fantasy series. <laughs> and continue all the series as well. So I decided, you know what, it is finally time. So I started listening to the audiobook actually, hence why I have no bookmark here. Um, I'm not too far into this one, but it is about the Kingdom of the Six Duchess, which is close to a civil war when news breaks that the crown prince has fathered a bastard son, so he's shamed into abdicating the throne. This child's name is of course Fitz and he is despised by everyone, with him being the bastard son of the prince. So he is basically raised in the castle stables because he still needs to be useful to the crown. And in order to be useful to the crown, he is also trained to be an assassin. And the story goes from there. Now, 
this again is a very slow burn book and Robin Hobb really takes her time developing the characters, especially Fitz, which I feel like we will get to see more in the next books of course, but in this one you can already see that she takes a long time talking about all the smallest details that truly make this character feel real and I absolutely adore that, but I feel like when I read this book for the first time I didn't have that much of an appreciation for slow burn stories, I just wanted the action to start as soon as possible, which seems so weird to say nowadays because I'm the, well I wouldn't say the exact opposite because I also like a good plot obviously, but I have a much deeper appreciation for character building stories, you know, and just taking time to get to know these people and, you know, with that really starting to care for them, which is exactly <laughs> what's happening to me right now. I already care so much about Fitz and I... there are some things here <laughs> that just hurt my soul and I got... I, I... I didn't cry exactly but I got... I got something in my eye, you know, <laughs> reading a few chapters of this book and I know it will get worse and I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> But at the same time, I am. I am so ready to continue on with this series. Um, again, I'm not far into this one. If I had to guess in the audiobook, I think I'm at chapter maybe two or three, I guess. So I just started rereading this. But I'm really excited for this journey because I would say my goal for this year is to at least finish this trilogy. So that would be Assassin's Apprentice, then we have Royal Assassin and then Assassin's Quest. I would really love to finish at least that trilogy so then next year I could keep up with the rest of the series, which is huge by the way. This is an entire world that Robin Hobb built and I am really excited to finally truly explore it. So if you've read this series, please let me know your thoughts as well because oh my gosh, I'm just so happy happy to finally be reading high fantasy again. I really missed it. The last book I read was The Lies of Locke Lamora, which I also want to read the sequel as soon as possible. It needs to happen because I miss those characters already and I want to be there with them again. <laughs> so that will also happen soon probably, um, but for now I'm just trying to focus on this book that I might switch to the sequel of The Lies of Locke Lamora. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I might start reading both series at once. I don't know. Right now I'm just way too excited <laughs> and I'm really happy to be reading this one again. So, But I'm pretty sure it will break my heart because that's how everyone apparently reacts to Robin Hobb's books. So we'll see. That's Assassin's Apprentice. And then finally, <laughs> I also... Okay, this does, this does not seem real, <laughs> but I also started reading Blame is by Victor Hugo. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> I started reading a book <laughs> a while ago and I think I've read around 40 pages, was it? I, I don't even know. No, maybe not that much even. Maybe around 20 pages. The first book, so this is divided into different parts and each one of those parts has books. A lot of those parts are apparently dedicated to specific characters and part one <laughs> says Fantine. And if you know, you know. If you know, you know. I started reading it and I immediately started crying. <laughs> and um, it sounds ridiculous because, listen, it is just the setup, you know, of the book. Nothing happened. But I'm... <laughs> I'm way too emotional about this story. I, I start thinking about the musical and I, it, it's just too much. <laughs> um, so I know this will be a very emotional journey to me. I will be reading it quite slowly, hopefully with some wonderful people as well, because I will be low-key but reading it with whoever wants to. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm terrified. I truly am, because I, I don't know what this will do to me. <laughs> Um, and this is one of those books that I have really, really high expectations for and I'm really hoping that I don't get disappointed. Even if it ends up not being a favorite exactly, I'm just really hoping to absolutely adore it. Um, and I have confidence in that, but I'm also a little scared. You know when you put too much pressure on something or very high expectations? That's me with this book. 
and I cannot believe I'm finally reading it. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep updating you on this book um, throughout different vlogs or if I'm going to film a video solely dedicated to it. I'm not sure yet, but I will let you know, of course. Um, anyhow, I'm just happy to finally be reading this and again, just a little scared, just a little scared. Also, I probably will not finish it until I don't even know, um, some months or maybe a year, I don't know, I don't know how this will go. It, I, w I truly want it to be a very slow and immersive journey. I want to feel completely lost on these pages and with these characters. I want to be there with them, although not really because it's it's terrible, but, um, but, but I want to, I want to. I want to be there, I want to experience this with them and I, yeah, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be amazing i feel like but i just thought i'd let you know in case you'd like to join me in reading this book of course and the links to the discord will be in the description if you are interested but wow lame is it's happening <laughs> it's happening all right everyone and i feel like that's basically everything that i wanted to mention and um, to end this vlog again sorry for not uploading as frequently i guess sometimes it just will happen and i'm sure you do know that and you understand that i just feel very bad for not uploading and for not being here as much i guess we'll just see how things go and hopefully i will get those videos ready for you soon um the ones that i'm working on such as my bookshelf tour and everything and um, hopefully i will get those done soon enough i'm really hoping to at least film more vlogs here and there just to keep you updated on where i've been what i've been reading and such so of course i will also be uploading on patreon so feel free to join me there if you'd like to thank you so much if you do your support means the world to me not only on patreon of course but just everywhere um, you are amazing and this community is wonderful i am very thankful to all of you and just let me know how you are let me know what you've been up to what you've been reading i'm really hoping to be back sooner than later <laughs> with more videos but until then just let me know how you are let me know if there's anything at all you'd like to share i would love to hear it so yes i think that's it for this video thank you so much again for watching and for being here i'm sending you the biggest biggest hug and all the love and i will see you hopefully very soon <laughs> on my next video bye everyone